Thanks so much for everybody getting on board for the video that I posted two weeks ago, the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. I shipped off that Gary Humphrey whistle just now, just today in fact, so hopefully it's going to be well looked after and well played for many years to come because it's a, it's a great instrument and I'm glad it's, uh, glad it's going to somebody who's going to play it, so that's really cool. The other thing that I'm really grateful for is all the, the comments that you guys posted on that video what instruments y'all were playing, things you played in the past, and it gave me an idea to do kind of a whole uh, comparison series of a bunch of different whistles. So that's what we're gonna start with today. And we're gonna do these two, the Jerry Freeman Tweaked uh, generation versus the OG regular old straight off the shelf generation. Wanna see if there's a huge difference between these. This one is not mine, I'm borrowing this from a friend. So thank you. Uh, he plays in our band, he's a Byron player and is gonna be a whistle player himself. Uh, but so I'm going to compare these two and then I'm also going to give some of these whistles away that um, that I'm just using for purposes of this demonstration. Generation did not sponsor this, Freeman didn't sponsor this, I'm just trying them out, just wanted to see what, how they sound. Because I haven't really spent a lot of time on that. I'm going to go through all the whistles that people were suggesting, people that they play now, and we're going to have some massive tin whistle comparison, breakdown, showdown, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to call it, something like that. But for now, we're talking about these two. Now, the Generation, I, I didn't bother, I, it came in a box with the thing, I didn't go through the whole unboxing thing because it's a whistle, it's in a box, you take it out of the box, you start playing. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, but I wanted to compare wanted to compare these two um, because this is these are some of the most popular ones that people are, are playing right now. So the basic model, I'm just going to play a, a, run a regular scale, I'm going to check tuning, haven't done any adjustments to this, this is just like I said straight out of the box. So here's just a basic scale. My ear sounded okay. Couldn't have no idea if it's actually in tune or not. Responsiveness. Ah. It starts to crumble a little bit. actually sounds a lot more responsive than I was expecting, let's put it that way. Uh, Mass-produced whistles, sometimes you never know what you're going to get. And that is one caveat with this. You may buy one and it sounds phenomenal. You may buy another one a week later and it sounds like garbage. Back in the old days, you used to be able to go into a music shop and they'd have a whole rack of these and you'd pick them up and try them and see what you think. Obviously in the days of COVID and just general not being gross, you can't really do that anymore. So you got to buy them, see what you think, and I guess you could ship it back. I got this off of Amazon. Um, so if it was terrible, I suppose I could have shipped it back, but just right off the bat. Pick a tune, let's play, um, let's play the uh, Rolling Waves. I'll play that on all the whistles here, so. sounds a lot more responsive than I was expecting. Now let me just check tuning real quick. So the app that I'm using is this Tuner Lite. It's a free iPhone app. Oh, you know, use it if you want. But that's what I'm going to use just for comparison's sake. So let's see how we're doing here. Wow. Pretty much across the board, at least that first octave, it's way sharp. So for Fortunately, okay. Now then, yeah, that's the trick with any of these mass-produced whistles. First thing you want to do is run it under some hot water. Not hot enough to melt plastic, of course, but you know, pretty warm. It's got to be pretty warm. You break that glue off so you can adjust it. Too much. Okay, a lot better. Not 100%, but you know, better. That's kind of what we're shooting for anyway with these things. So now, the comparison. This is the Freeman. And again, this is not mine, I'm just borrowing it. Um, but I can see, just looking at it at a glance, I don't know if you can see this at all in the video, but I can see he's made some changes to the Fipple. 
Um, other than that, I'm not entirely sure what he's done, but this is not really my wheelhouse is tweaking whistles. It's definitely not a strong point. I don't see anything with the holes and I don't see anything inside the tube. Doesn't mean it's not there. It means that I'm just not saying it, but let's just see how this one sounds. Well, judging by that, it just seems a bit less raspy, you know, like a little bit more uh, confidence to the notes, if that makes any sense. So, same tune. Nope, that's not the right tune. Everything just seems a bit more, a bit more likely to hit the note that I'm shooting for, if that makes any sense. Let's do a real quick comparison back to the original generation. Well, well the tuning is different, but. It's really that top end. Those notes, those are the ones that just seem a little bit more likely to crack. Now, they don't, always, but just running through this real quick. It doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. It doesn't sound bad. In fact, it sounds very old school. It sounds like some of the recordings you'd hear in the 50s or so, people playing tin whistle, or maybe even some of the early uh, Chieftains re uh, recordings. Patty Maloney, for years, played on Generations, and he played the hell out of them. They sound fantastic. But just some of those notes feel a little bit grittier. That's not inherently a bad thing, but when I compare it, I don't, I don't have that feeling like maybe this note is gonna break. That's really the main difference that I'm hearing with these two whistles. Now, the last part of this video that we're gonna knock out with these two is comparing it to my all-time favorite, Gary Humphrey. So here we go, quick scale again, just for a refresher. Basic generation. Okay. Now the Freeman. Okay. Now, my old ancient Gary Humphrey. Now part of it is because I've been playing this, forever, um, 15 years. Again, it's, it's more a matter of confidence, I think. I'm just, I'm just used to the way this one goes. That's not to say somebody can't become a master on a $10, $12 whistle. I think this was about 12 bucks, something like that. It's just different, you know? And this one, the, the Freeman, I think, is, is, has got a lot of those really good characteristics of the old school whistles, but it's a lot more stable. That sounds a lot, a lot closer. It's just got a bit of a buzz to it. You know, I think that's the main difference versus. And it's probably not a fair comparison because again, I've been playing this for a long time, but I'm just more used to it. So you can see a bit of a difference between something that's gonna cost you 12 bucks versus a free, uh, the Freeman. I think these run about 35 or 40, depending on where you get them, versus a Humphrey, which is about 100. But I hope you guys like these. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of them. I've got maybe four or five of them in mind that I'm gonna do some reviews on, all leading up to the grand finale the great first annual Whistle Tutor Whistle Smackdown. Does that sound good? Smackdown? Feels like we need a Smackdown. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.